Alright, so pack in your suitcase. You look inside your suitcase. Your enemy when you're packing a suitcase is wrinkles. So one thing that causes wrinkles is your two frame supports right here. So what you're supposed to do is you put your socks in like so so that you get rid of your frame supports and create a flat surface. You can also put underwear and that type and things that don't really matter if they get wrinkled or not to create a flat surface. Once you have a flat surface, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your suits. And you're gonna, you can pack two or three, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay it across like this so that you're inside and it creates creating a, a bed but there's no creases in the actual in the actual like suit pants or jacket. So then you're gonna take your jacket, you're gonna take one arm, you're gonna fold it inside out like so, and then you're gonna take the other arm and you're gonna put it inside just like that. You want the inside because you're putting other stuff in here and in case something spills or anything like that, that way it's protected. Um, one of the techniques too, especially for suit jackets, is take a rolled up underwear, socks, or anything like that, and put it right here in the shoulder pad. <coughs> you don't want a wrinkle to cause right there. Then you lay this in just like this, so that it also sits in there to where there's no wrinkles or anything like that. It's just a flat surface. So this lighting's really bad, so I just want to point out that it's laying over the pants, which are still draped across here. Yes. Yeah, the lighting's really bad. So you continue building up just like that with your suits. So I'm not going to do more than one for this video, but you just keep rotating like that. So you would put pants here you, and then the jacket here? Well, so then you would go opposite, and your next jacket would go this way, and your next pants would go this oh, way. okay. And then you take your other stuff that doesn't matter, such as jeans, athletic shorts, workout clothes, shorts, shirts, whatever, doesn't matter, and you stack them all up together. Shirts and that type, so when you're using more, um, another way, I like the polyester style shirts, most of your active shirts, that type of stuff, because it doesn't matter, because they unwrinkle very well, or they don't wrinkle um, really at all. And you can roll those up like so, and you can put those in all, all of your wrinkle points. So the whole point is to, what causes a wrinkle is when you have a crease like this. If you have any creases like that, the way to prevent it is to, for your underwear or your shirts that don't wrinkle, if you were to have a crease like that, then you would just put your shirt here and roll it over because that will prevent a wrinkle. So once you've got that done, the next thing you do for your dress shirts is once you put everything together, you build a square like so, and then you take a dress shirt and you lay it down on the bed or on a flat surface. And then what you're going for is you're going for the square. So the shoulders, the arms make kind of like a square. You take these, you take your pile of things, and you lay them along your creases like this. So you want to make sure that you flatten it out, and it's good because this is where your wrinkles are going to be. Remember, especially for suits and that type of stuff, your arms really don't matter because they're going inside your jacket. But still, for when you're going without a jacket and that type of occasion, you want it as wrinkle-free as possible. So. Your baseline does everything. So the less wrinkled that this is, the better it's gonna work out. Same thing, you do this, put it inside the square, and then you fold your shirt over like this, and you make sure that you pull it tight, because that's gonna get rid of your wrinkles. And then you work your sleeve around like this, so that when you turn it over, it looks like that, and it's underneath. And then you work all your wrinkles out. Same thing going this way. Fold it under, 
so that there's no wrinkles. Straighten that out. And then bring it around. And then you button it, which is one thing I didn't go over. So your buttons for this, now this shirt is already wrinkled because it needs to be dry cleaned. I'm just doing it for illustration purposes. But you're buttoning here on top and you're gonna button another one almost all the way down. And the rest are unbuttoned? And the rest are unbuttoned. You can do it however you want, but you don't have to button them all. But the whole point is, is when you turn it around, it, it's, it's tight and there's no wrinkles. Now, like I said, there's already wrinkles inside of this, but in a freshly dry clean shirt, there's not gonna be any wrinkles here because these shirts need to go to the dry cleaners. So then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your next dress shirt and you can take as many as you want and you're gonna lay it flat on the bed. And the only difference here is you're going to flip it around. So this one is going to still go inside the square, only the collar is going to be opposite on this one. So this is the shirt that we did previously. Next collar is here. So the whole point is, like I said, there's no creases here. So you're basically rolling your collar up and around because there won't be any creases. On the back side or on the other side, you're going to do the same thing that we did on last time or on the last shirt and you're still going to work around your sleeves like so to where there's no wrinkles same thing no wrinkles this is exactly how i pack my suitcase and then roll your collar up so here this collar is going to get rolled up too and then basically what you're doing is you're causing a square and when you're done whoops this came unbuttoned but when it's buttoned, there's nothing that causes a crease because everything is a roll around. Once you're done with that, you're going to take your square that you made and you're going to put it inside your suitcase so that it sits like this. And then you're going to take your jacket and make sure that that is not rolled around or make sure that it's rolled around. Remember, no creases. Fold your jacket around this way. And I lost this portion a minute ago when I did the demonstration, but it's supposed to be sitting out like this. And it's going to be set like this and then your pants are going to go like this so for instance when you pull it out you've created squares sitting on top of squares and remember it's a flat surface here so that goes inside your suitcase here anything else that you need such as your shaving kit or anything like that you can go on the side here now here's the part where most people mess up with their shoes is you can put multiple pairs of shoes in here, but a lot of people put their shoes in first when that is totally wrong. That's what I do. Your shoes go in last. What? You're blowing my mind. So, these, I, typically I don't have them with me here, but you have your shoe bags that they go in, so they'll be sitting in here like this, and you'll put your shoe, well, actually first, you'll strap your clothes down, and then your shoes will go on top of here. Your next shoes can go here. Your normal shoes can go here. You have all kinds of different rooms that, room that you can do. It's no different. You can have, I can get six, seven dress shirts in like this. I can get three suits in here. I can get um, four or five days worth of normal clothes in here. Is this a carry-on size? All in carry-on size. You also have these style pockets here that you can use for run over all of that but at the end of the day right now i have one suit in here i have two dress shirts i have five um, normal shirts i have two pairs of shorts i have an athletic short pair of shorts and i have a pair of pants all in here right now and you can see how much additional room that i have and he has room for his wife's stuff that doesn't fit in her suitcase and i do also have to fit my wife's stuff <laughs> inside of my suitcase sometimes so when you're packing very well it, it works <laughs> So that is how you pack for a business trip. When you're not doing the business trip, you do the same thing with your jeans, only because now that you don't have a jacket, if you're, if you're carrying like a heavyweight jacket or a light jacket or anything like that, you treat it just like the suit jacket. However, the jacket doesn't have to be turned inside out like this one. But as far as the way that you organize it, they still go in the same. The pants, I always like to start out first layer this way with pants and then the jacket this way and then you alternate each one. So my next layer of pants are going to go this way and my next jacket's going to go this way and you're always folding stuff on top of another. Now for just your normal trip, 
when you're not taking dress shirts, then you're working with a lot of extra room. So then what I like to do is I just like to, to roll my shirts. And you can get a lot of stuff in here when you roll, especially when you have a polyester cotton mix of shirts. Even my dress shirts or my um, business casual shirts, I always do cotton polyester mix. Under Armour does it, a lot of golf shirts do it. Um, all of that line because you can do basically anything that you want, pull it out, and it's going to be wrinkle free. That's what my dad wears too. So you fold. So for instance, here's a pair of pants. And then for this one, because jeans are going to be more of your everyday wear, pretend this is a pair of jeans, this is a pair of jeans or pants or whatever it is that you like to wear. Remember your base is how everything happens. So like this pair of jeans right now, if it's folded like this, when I pack it, if I unfold it, then this all right here is going to be wrinkled. However, if you if you start with a pair that's not wrinkled and you put it in and you smooth out all the wrinkles, when you take it out, because there's no creases anywhere, it will be wrinkle free. So then what you do is you take your short you take your shorts, your shirts, whatever, and then you start stacking those in just like so. And with this one, you can literally get like 20 shirts in here, two or three pairs of, of jeans, five or six pairs of shorts, uh, athletic shorts, bathing suits, um, so on and so forth. Because then the whole point is, is you're just fitting things in to where they make the most sense with shoes and all that. And then when you're done, you're folding over, you're folding over, you're folding over, and you're folding over. And at the end of the day, you're coming in and you're just creating a square that's going to sit here. Again, shaving kit will go on the side. Shoes, again, always go on top. So as you can see, you can still I can still fit another pair of dress shoes in here. I can fit normal pairs of shoes in here. Sandals, I typically will put on the side. Belts, when you have them. This video is getting long. How are we going to send it to him? Belts, when you have them. I work them around and everything is, so you work it around like this. So everything is sitting here and you're making, you're maximizing your space as much as possible. Other socks can go in here, underwear can go in here. You're maximizing your space. And then at the end of the day, you're clipping everything in. And then you're packing three weeks of stuff on a carry-on. I can, in this exact method, I can get three weeks in on a carry-on. Um, we went to New Zealand on a carry-on for three weeks. Same so method. did I, for the record. Same method. Pack it like this. Here's <laughs> the basics, and you can kind of go from there as far as maximizing space. The biggest one is for your wrinkles. Your wrinkle-free stuff is just creating the squares. And you can leave these in for two or three days, four days at a time. You can pull it out, shake it out, and there will be no wrinkles. Another thing is baseline, you want to make sure that it's smooth so all of your socks, underwear, all that stuff go right here so that you have a baseline to set it on. And that is how you pack a suitcase. The Chris Tucker packing method.